Hello and welcome in, friends, to this Saturday short here on Sports from the Couch on Mercado Airwaves. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. I want to thank you so much for making us a part of your Saturday, May 29th, 2021. I hope each and every one of you is having a wonderful, safe Memorial Day weekend. And of course, a huge thank you to those who have served our country and of course, those who served and lost their lives while protecting this great nation. All flaws included, we thank you and we are thinking of you on this Memorial Day weekend. And hopefully, we can be a fun distraction as we talk about your Chicago Cubs here on Sports from the Couch. But before we get to all that, I want to take care of some housekeeping notes. Follow us all over the universe. I'm on Twitter at Mike and Media, Instagram, Mike Mercado Media. You can be interactive with the show on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. Like, rate, review, and share us wherever you get your favorite podcasts on all podcast platforms at Mercado Airwaves. Become a producer of the show or you can support us in any which way with all these different tiers we have at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network if you would like to see the video version of the podcast as well as on facebook.com slash Mercado Airwaves. We have swag at teespring.com slash Mercado Airwaves. And, of course, keep up to date with everything we're doing on the network from the True Crime Show, the Pop Culture Show, Two Nerds of a Feather, the Gone Missing Podcast, and our interviews with athletes and celebrities by following us on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves. So on today's Saturday short, I wanted to talk about the Chicago Cubs and the future this team is looking like they're going down. And what might end up becoming a reality, even at a nice 28 and 22, half game behind the St. Louis Cardinals. I'm starting to, I don't know if come to the realization or just being okay with it or being numb to it, that the Cubs are going to be sellers. Or at the very least, I don't think anytime this season you're going to see them extend Chris Bryant, Javier Baez, Anthony Rizzo. With whoever else you may think, Wilson Contreras, I don't think this core will be the core moving forward. And it's tough for a lot of fans. And that's why I kind of wanted to have this therapeutic episode of Sports on the Couch. So please lay down on the couch and let's talk about it because it's going to be tough for a lot of fans to, to see this happen. And the worst part is they're not wrong. This shouldn't be going this way. This shouldn't happen. The Chicago Cubs are so rich. They generate so much revenue. For them to cry poor or to go down this route the way they are, not only does it leave a bad taste in fandom's mouth, it should. And I'm not okay with it. I've just come to terms with it. And really, we all should have seen this coming from the jump. When you Darvish was traded to San Diego for what might be nice prospects, sure. But for nothing that was going to help you in the immediate future. That's when you should have known. You should have known when they got rid of Kyle Schwarber and John Lester. But they bring in Jake Arrieta. Jock Peterson's nice. He's worked out okay at points. But we should have seen the tea leaves. There's an awesome article by Gordon Whitmire on NBC about the Chicago Cubs making it difficult for this front office, for this ownership. And I think that's what a lot of fans have kind of seen. That's been, the, the veil has been lifted of seeing the, the difference. The, this, the Marvel Civil War type of battle between the front office and these players, this ro- these rosters. And, you know, really fast to talk about Jed Hoyer. Because I see a lot of people giving Jed Hoyer a hard time. If you don't think that this dude wants to make moves, wants to give contracts, wants to be active to try to win a World Series, you're crazy. He wants to, he's a killer executive. But his job right now is to be the shield between that ownership and the fans. That's all that is. Because I don't think this ownership thinks that this team can win. And in that article, Gordon Wittmeyer wrote, you hear Chris Bryant talking about it. You hear him saying that he doesn't believe that the Chicago Cubs thought this team could be that way. And they want to make it difficult on them. Now, to Jed Hoyer's credit, that's what he wants. He doesn't want to be in that in-between. But you got to remember, this roster, 
this group of guys that have been together in the minor league system since like what 2012 2013 all the way to winning a world series this team was this close one bad week away from Theo Epstein making crazy Un, un, unimaginable roster moves. Now, that's us embellishing, but he talked about that there were going to be big moves when this team was five and a half games under 500 at the All-Star break. So, it's not like this team hasn't had that pressure on them, and they're responding really well. So, it actually got me thinking. Some Cubs teams, and and I know now that we've seen the outcome of them winning the World Series and how they had to put that together, right? And like that road that they took. Before that, anytime the Cubs were in a playoff race, that they had a chance to be competitive, they made moves. They brought guys in. I don't think that's going to be the case this year. Even if they're playing well, even if they're having a wonderful May, I think they're going to be very conservative at the All-Star break, at the trade deadline. And that's going to be a shell shock of a moment for these fandoms, these Chicago fans that have never had a team that's kind of sat on their hands. And they're not wrong. They're not wrong to feel that way. The fans are. To play devil's advocate, you can convince me to tell me why it's hard to pay a player $300 million. I get it. But if we're living in this reality where these guys make this money, that they're paid by their performance, you got to pay Chris Bryant because somebody's going to. Now, why, to me, it makes more sense for the organization, the Cubs, that is, over other organizations. I always believe you don't pay for past performance for another team. So if a guy dominated and helped win a World Series for another organization, you don't then pay him to try to do that for you, especially when they're getting of age. I think of Albert Pujols, right? The Cardinals got the best out of Albert, right? And the Angels paid for that. The Angels paid for that success. Did they win a World Series? Was he ever the same Albert Pujols? Now he's having this resurgence because he's playing for the Dodgers, and we all know the Dodgers sell clicks and, and views. But that's that's where I, I oh I when I see these big players, these big names that go through their first big contract, that that huge money making deal, and they look for that next one. That's kind of the the baseline for me is that Albert Pujols deal to Anaheim, and you can make the argument you're going to pay Chris Bryant a lot of money, but you're paying him for what he's done for your organization, what he's doing for right now. That's how I think. Now, as a business owner myself, you could put yourself in that position. Do they want to give a seven-year deal to a 30-year-old third baseman? I see it as, do you want to give it to the guy that's come back over all these injuries, all these pressures, can play any position, is always level-headed, is a great part of the community? Yeah, I'd invest in that. I'd invest in a lot of these guys. You're the Chicago Cubs. Look around the league. They want to stay under those taxes, you know. They don't want to be paying extra when it comes to the luxury. So, you know, I think the only move that I think the Cubs should make that might help might help them long term, but might hurt them short term as well, is Craig Kimbrell. I think this is the best you're going to get from him. And if this is the best you're going to get from him, and you maybe make a playoff run. But the Cubs aren't a World Series favorite. They're not even the favorite to win the NL Central. So if you could get a haul, and if somebody wants to overpay for Craig Kimbrell, you have no choice but to do it. But what offer is anybody going to make to you for Chris Bryant? How desperate does a team have to be? How close do they feel they are to a World Series for them to give everything to you for Chris Bryant? As a rental. That's. This is the thing. Most Cup fans are. Not talking about. But it's just. Scaring them to death. In the terms of. Sportum. Right. It's. What happens. If you don't trade. 
Chris Bryant, Javi, Wilson, Kimbrough, whoever. You don't trade anybody. You don't win the World Series. And none of them stay. You end up with nothing. And that is a real scenario that can happen. And you have to keep that in mind as a Cub fan. That that is what this front office and ownership are thinking. Imagine having the mindset of not only I don't want to pay this guy, but I want to get as much assets from him as I can, and neither happen. That is as legit of a possibility as some of the other two. So not only are you going to have to be okay with them moving on from some of these guys, but maybe moving on from not only a great talent, but not getting back what you perceive to be a good return. And none of us are going to know that, especially in baseball. It's such a long time to see how some of these things play out. So, I wanted to get on here and just kind of vent and talk this out. We're on Memorial Day weekend. The Cubs are a half game behind the St. Louis Cardinals in first place of the NL Central. They are at 28-22, and a wonderful May. Bullpen is firing on all cylinders. Chris Bryant is at an MVP type of run. Javi is a magician on the field, just doing crazy stuff on the base paths. You've had some injuries, but guys are coming back. Sogard and, and Duffy have been a wonderful addition by just playing and getting the ball into you know the field and into action and getting runs. Like it's Jock Peterson has heated up. Like there's stuff to like about this Cubs team. But if I were telling you to put the mortgage on them, do you think they're gonna win the World Series? And if that's that right there is the grading scale for them and this ownership to do anything. What are the chances they're going to make a big move come the offseason? And another thing is, everybody thinks they're in it. Who are you going to make a big move with? That has me worried as a Cup fan. And as a baseball watcher, seeing how some of these teams are holding on to assets, knowing that they don't want to pay these guys, that the best way to win a championship is on cheap contracts, even in baseball, it has me wondering who's going to be the team that's going to cough up everything to get a Chris Bryant. There's going to be a team that does it. I just wonder who it is. Now, if we're going down that road, now, of course, my dream scenario is we wake up one morning and Chris Bryant signs a six-year, however, million-dollar deal, and we're, we don't have to worry about that anymore. But if we don't live in that reality and we live in the alternate one where he's going to be playing for somebody else, what do you need in return? It's so much easier in basketball or in football to to quantify some of these things to get them back. Baseball is such a luck of the draw. So what would it take for you as a Cubs fan, as a Chris Bryant fan, as a baseball fan, what would it take if you were the GM, if you were Jed Hoyer or you were the Ricketts to trade a Chris Bryant? What would it take? Would it take immediate pitching right now? Would it take five-star double-A players? Like, what would it take for you to be comfortable with that trade? Would you be comfortable if by next season, Javi's not on the squad, Bryant's not on the squad, Rizzo? Like, where's the line as a Cubs fan for you to feel, yeah, things have to happen, this is baseball. Baseball does these things. Although it's that argument of this is what baseball does Not when you're the Chicago Cubs. You shouldn't be playing like a smart market team. A smart market maybe, not a small market. Not the Cubs. And that's what it feels like. And that's what a lot of motion is for the Chicago Cubs and their fans. And it's, I don't think, and and I'll be honest with you, I don't think this team could win the World Series. I think they could be a tough out. I think they're going to be in it all the way to September if nothing happens, even if they keep the roster the same. They're just too talented. But to win a World Series against the Padres or the Dodgers and the NL and just to get to the, you know, a team like the White Sox, the Red Sox, you know, like there's, look, just look at some of these teams right now. The, and this might have something to, I was looking at this earlier. The reason why I think they might just stay put even if they can't make moves is nobody's running away with anything. The Mets are 24 and 20 in first place. They're a team that maybe would look into Chris Bryant. The Braves, 24 and 25. So right away, they're under 500. The Phillies, 25 and 27. The Marlins, 24 and 27. The Nationals, 21 and 26. 
The Cardinals are at 29 and 22, only a half game above the Cubs. The Brewers are three and a half uh, are three games behind first place. Now, uh, the NL West is where it's crazy. And this is where if you're a Cub fan or if you're anybody in baseball, you're like, who's getting through this murder row? But you have the Padres, the Dodgers, Giants. You have the Padres at 33 and 19, the Dodgers at 31 and 20, the Giants at 31 and 20. If you're ownership, do you think that they can win? Get out of the NL? And if you get out of the NL, you have the Rays at 33 and 20. Who would have thought, right? Small market team just goes to show. The Red Sox at 31 and 20. The Yankees at 29 and 22. The Blue Jays at 26 and 24. They're not going anywhere, but fun to see the Blue Jays. The White Sox at 30 and 20. Cleveland at 27 and 22. Now they're hanging around. And in Oakland at 31 and 22. The Astros at 27 and 23. Like, there are some killers in baseball. Now, nobody's run away with it other than the NL West. So that would make it, if you're the Cubs team, maybe you could be buyers. Maybe you could sneak in and, and do some damage. But I don't know if this team is, is built to win a World Series. Which is why I think this ownership is going to go down that direction of just kind of starting anew. Let's rebuild this thing. Let's start fresh. And it's going to suck because there's a lot of beloved players that are going to go down in history. Some of the greatest Cubs ever that I don't think we'll see the end of the 2021 season. But I could be 100% wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, because I like a lot of these dudes, and I hope they get paid. They're going to get paid somewhere. I just hope it's here in Chicago. But let us know your thoughts. What do you think is going to happen with the core of the Chicago Cubs? Who stays? Who goes? Can they win the NL Central? Can they win the World Series? Will they be the legitimate Major League team like the movie in Major League, like the Cleveland Indians, and win in spite of their owners. Let us know all over the universe. I'm on Twitter at Mike and Media. Instagram, Mike Mercado Media. Be interactive with the show on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. That'll do it for us on this edition on this Saturday short here on Sports from the Couch. Make sure you like, rate, review, and share us wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Uh, you can keep up with us on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves. Become a producer of the show at Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and Teespring.com for some swag. Mercado Airwaves. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Enjoy all the games. We will see you next time here on Sports from the Couch on the Mercado Airwaves Network. I'm Mike Mercado.